Welcome to the Light Reading Executive Spotlight Q&A. This is Light Reading's sponsored podcast series that explores the people and technologies that are moving the industry forward. Today, we're speaking with Worldwide Technology, which also won a Light Reading Leading Lights Award in 2023. WWT won for Outstanding Use Case for Networked Edge. The Leading Lights Awards is Light Reading's flagship awards program, where we recognize the industry's top companies and executives for outstanding achievements in next-gen communications technology, applications, services, strategies, and innovation. And today, I'm joined by Kyle Lindsay, Principal Consultant at Worldwide Technology. Good to see you, Kyle. Great to see you too, Kelsey. Yeah, thanks so much for joining me. So today we're gonna to be talking about augmented reality. Can you tell us a little bit about Worldwide Technologies' approach to both augmented reality and also extended reality? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're really excited about this space. It, it highlights a, a great place for WWT. As we look into spatial compute and XR, uh, it really takes a very tight tech stack, as we like to say. Um, and we had actually got involved in this uh, a few years ago as we had built out a blueprint for our edge compute platform. So at the time, the Converge Edge platform, we had several different ISVs that we had partnered with. And one of the fun ones that we actually had partnered with was a company called Forward Game. And they had an augmented reality air hockey game. So we thought, hey, how fun would it be to expand that and see if there's something else we can do within the uh, AR field, leveraging our Converged Edge platform. And as it turned out, we had recently partnered with NASCAR with WWT Raceway. So it seemed to be a perfect fit. Uh, so that's where we created the, the Race AR experience uh, that we actually demonstrate yearly at the STEM lane during the Enjoy Illinois 300 race. Oh, very cool. I'd love to see that sometime. <laughs> uh, so tell us a little bit about why uh, latency is really important to both XR and AR experiences. Yeah, that, that really was kind of the main emphasis here. I had a lot of questions early on of like, are you a video game company? And the answer was no. Uh, we partner with a lot of video game companies. We like to, to help them in their space. But really, as you think through the requirements for low latency, uh, I work in the media, entertainment, and gaming, so it's obviously very important when you talk about video games, when you talk about a, a lot of those experiences, uh, but it just goes to the next level when you're talking about augmented reality and virtual reality. We really try to design an architect down to the 20 millisecond, 7 millisecond range. Uh, when you think about kind of the photon to the eyeball through the end-to-end -end system and then take into attract uh, just the actual head movements, it, it takes a lot, right? So moving a lot of the compute components out to the edge, leveraging private LTE, uh, 5G, that's really when you can see these experiences shine. Mm -hmm. And because latency is important, not only um, just to the visual experience, but also how you feel while you're playing the game, right? Like you can feel a little bit nauseated if, if the latency is off. Is that right? That's absolutely true. There is a direct correlation to low latency and just getting kind of physically ill when you're encountering these. Uh, there are other components like refresh rate and some of the other technologies but having that, that very low latency is absolutely key. Uh, the other thing that actually also is important that's probably underappreciated sometimes is stability. So addressing the jitter as well. Um, I've talked to some really incredibly brilliant augmented reality developers, and they have all said, yes, we need low latency, but they would actually choose a stable latency uh, because they can design to a stable latency as long as it's low in the 20 millisecond range. Mm -hmm. So we talked about latency, stability, refresh rate. Are there any other technical requirements um, that are, are really important for that customer experience for AR? Yeah, it really is. It's, it's a full stack. Um, so we work very closely with uh, what you would just expect, right? The Android, the AR kit, uh, the iOS stack. Um, 
one of the fun and exciting things with our experiences have been the multiplayer aspect of it and adding the gamification elements. Uh, so when you have that shared kind of digital experience with an augmented reality, you do need some kind of extra technologies in there. So we're leveraging SLAM, synchronous lo location and mapping with cloud anchors. Uh, and then currently we're, we're primarily from a glasses standpoint using the X real light glasses. Uh, but all of our demos are, are pretty much can be used with any of the phones or iPads out there. We try to make it as flexible as possible because when we're giving these demonstrations, we're giving them out on the, on the STEM lane, out in the racetrack or at a large conference. So we really need to be flexible. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned large conferences. Uh, what are some of the new use cases uh, for AR at venues? I know it's, um, you know, really important for attendees to have this uh, full experience. So what, what can we look forward to in terms of AR at venues? Yeah, I can tell you there's a lot of excitement around spatial compute and immersive experiences across the venue space, concerts, sports, you name it. Just look at all, all the, the talk around the sphere in Las Vegas. You look at some of the really neat stuff Nickelodeon is doing in partnership with NH, with the NFL, uh, some of the NHL partnership with Verizon. And really, the conversation I generally will have with the leadership at these sports venues, and really what gets them excited is bringing in that next generation, the younger kids into it. And having that, I mean, these kids grew up in a, with digital, right, in their hands. Um, so so how, do, how do we bring them and get them really excited about the experience? And then not only that, uh, there's some really interesting new revenue streams that we're exploring. And I generally don't just live within augmented reality. I mean, a lot of these technologies stack, right? So we just had a conversation a couple of weeks ago with a sports venue about how do you leverage augmented reality at the same time within the solution, a computer vision aspect, and at the same time, digital signage, right? So, um, so really, it's it's the edge compute that kind of can enable all that. But, and then it's the interconnectivity between each one of those solutions to really give that compelling experience to the visitor to any particular venue. Yeah, definitely a lot of moving parts there and a lot of great examples of why the edge is so important uh, right now. So looking ahead uh, to next year, I can't believe it's already almost 2024, but what are you looking forward to um, for Worldwide Technologies Immersive XR Experience in 2024? Yeah, so we're we're going to do a lot of expansion there. Uh, we just actually created a digital twin experience of our global headquarters, uh, which is really exciting. And that's one that we're demoing at most of the major trade shows now. And then connecting that into IoT sensors, once again, leveraging computer vision and really seeing the art of the possible of how these immersive and emerging technologies are connecting. Uh, we're excited about just some of the new like physical headsets, right? Uh, we're working with Magic Leap 2s with their new headset. Uh, got a lot of work going on with the MetaQuest 3s. Really excited about the Apple Vision Pros uh, to see kind of what expansion that's going to give us. Um, looking at additional telemetry and IoT sensors at the racetrack. So you name it. it it's, it's really that that complex integration, but really it's for that end experience, whether it be for the consumer of the ven of the venue um, or for the business owner. Mm -hmm. And certainly a lot of opportunities, um, I imagine with the digital twins um, technology, like you mentioned as well. Uh, so we're about out of time, but I wanted to make sure that uh, our listeners knew where to find out more about your work and, and where can they find out more about worldwide technology? Yeah, absolutely. So WWT.com. Uh, and if you actually search WWT.com, uh, M-E-G or G-E-M-M, -M, you'll get to kind of our direct page. But really off of that main page, you'll see all of the work we're doing across augmented reality, artificial intelligence, machine learning, really all in this space. 
Yeah, you certainly wear a lot of hats. Well, Kyle, thanks so much for joining me. And uh, for those listening to this podcast series, if this is your first time, um, please do go check out uh, past episodes as well at www.lightreading.com. Thanks again, Kyle. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Kelsey. It's been great. 